Hi everybody, Mr. Gerhard here, and we're going to talk about the number E today. Yes, that's right, the number E. Um, it is an irrational number, kind of like pi or the square root of 3, uh, and we find that using some of the compounding interest formulas that we've used before. Uh, yesterday you did an example, or two days ago you did an example, um, where we found what this was as we improved or increased n. And as n got bigger and bigger, and this is what it means, as n approaches positive infinity, uh, making these bigger and bigger, we get closer and closer to this number E, which is 2.718281828846, and it keeps going on forever with no repeating, even though this 18281828 kind of seems like it repeats. It does go on forever and it never repeats. And so we're going to use E when we talk about continuous growth. We're also going to use E um, as we move along. Um, and we're going to do some examples here. So I hope you learn something. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work and simplify expressions with E. Um, and we treat E as though it's a variable. Even though it's not a variable, it's a constant, it's a number. Um, we're going to treat it as though it is a variable so that when I see something like E to the seventh times E to the fourth, I can use my exponent properties and say that that is E to the eleventh because when I multiply uh, things with the same base, I add the exponents, and 4 plus 7 is 11, so I get e to the 11th. And I'm just going to keep it in terms of e right now. Same thing over here, I see 24 e to the 8th over 4 e to the 5th, and if uh, we're like Spencer, we're going to say split it up, so we're going to say 24 over 4, and we're going to say e to the 8th over e to the 5th. Now, e to the uh, or let's do 24 divided by 4, that's easy, that's 6. Um, and then e to the 8th over e to the 4th, we subtract our exponents and we just get e to the 4th. So 24 e to the 8th over 4 e to the 5th just becomes 6e to the 4th. Over here we have 2e to the negative 3rd times 6e to the 5th. And we're going to split them up or group them, I guess, because everything's multiplication. Even though there's not a little dot there, we actually are doing 2 times e to the negative third times 6 times e to the fifth. And so I can really make this 2 times 6 and e to the negative third times e to the fifth. 2 times 6 is 12, and when I have like bases, I add the exponents, and that gives me e squared. So 12e squared would be my simplified form there. Finally, on our last simplifying expression problem here, we're going to distribute this exponent because this is multiplication. We can distribute across uh, multiplication. So really what I'm going to get is 10 to the third, which we'll figure out in a second, and e to the negative 4x oops, to the third as well, which is a power to a power. Now 10 to the third is 1,000 because there's three zeros there. And e to the negative 4x is actually going to become e to the negative 12x. Now the one last thing that I want to do with this is I want to make this so that the exponent's not negative. And so to make a negative exponent not negative, we put it in the denominator. And so I'll really have 1,000 over e to the 12x. And that's our simplified answer. Now, the difference between simplifying and evaluating, evaluating we're going to approximate something. So e to the fourth is going to be some decimal that keeps going on. And so I'm going to put a squiggly little line there. And I'm going to take out my calculator. And I'm just going to go e to the fourth. It should be on the left-hand side on Inspire. There's an e to the x button. And so you just say e to the fourth. And I got 54.598 five nine eight one five and then it's zero zero three three one but we'll just round to the nearest five decimal places I guess and um, it's going to keep going on and on this is an approximation that's why the squiggly lines are there it's not an exact answer but that is uh, what it is and then we get e to the three-fourths. Again, I'm going to do e to the three divided by four. If you're using an 84, make sure to put that exponent in parentheses. And I got 2.117 and then a bunch of zeros, four zeros and then 1661. So I'm just going to round it there and be good to go with that. If I wanted to, I could put two more zeros there so it has five decimal places. But those are just our decimal approximations with uh, evaluating those um, expressions. So. 
Simplifying, we're going to keep in terms of E. Evaluate, we're going to plug into our calculator and figure out what those are. Now, does this represent exponential growth or exponential decay? Well, we said that E is approximately 2.71828 dot dot dot, right? And so if I were to look at this, I would say this is like my base in our exponent our exponential expressions and equations and since b is greater than one we're like well yeah it's exponential growth right exponential growth so these are all going to be exponential growth however when we get to something here with a negative exponent remember yesterday when we drew the exponential growth graph that's like b to the x what happens when we make it a negative well, now it becomes decay. So when I look at these expressions and equations, I should say, functions, um, I'm going to look to see what the exponent is. Because here we have 2e to the x minus 3. This is a positive exponent. And since it's positive, I know that's going to be exponential growth. This one here is 3e to the negative x. Since that has a negative exponent, we're going to know that's exponential decay. Here we have 2 to the x, that's positive, so that's going to be growth. And then here we have e to the x minus 1. Now even though there's this minus 1, the x value is still positive, and so what that's going to do is it's going to make it exponential growth as well. The minus 1 just shifts it right 1. So it's going to take our negative 3 fourths e to the x and shift it right 1. And so uh, it's still exponential growth, but it is going to move to the right 1. Now how are we going to graph these? Well, we're going to graph them with our calculator because even if I wanted to plug in values here, this is not going to be very nice. <clears throat> it's not going to be very nice because we really only have one nice number here, and that's when x is 0. If I plug in x is 0, I get 0.5 times 0, which is 0. e to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 is 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. And so I know that 0, 2 is on my graph. What I don't know is what other points are on my graph. So I'm going to click over here to the calculator, and you can see I already got it up here. I'm going to say 2e to the 0.5 x. And there's our equation. I can click enter. You can see what the graph looks like here on this uh, nice window. All right, No need to really change the window. But I want to get some good points. And so my good points, I'm going to go ahead and press control T. And you can see now that I can go through here in 1.33, um, 2.54, and then uh, 3, 8.96. All right, those are all good numbers that I can plot in here. So let me just jot these down here real quickly. So now I'm going to go back over here into my graph, and I'm going to go ahead and graph those points. We already got our 0, 2, which we did once. Um, and then my other points were 1, 3.3. .3, so there's 3.3. .3, make that point there. And then we got 2, 5.4. So that's about right there. And then we got 3, 8.96, so 8. Let's see, 2.468.96, so almost to 9. And then we also got our negatives, negative 1, 1 1.21, right there. Negative 2, 0.74, right there. Uh, negative 3, 0.45, right about there. And then you also have negative 4.27. Okay, we have our horizontal asymptote at y equals zero because this hasn't moved up or down at all. So you can see that dotted line there. And then this is just an exponential graph that grows like that. Not very good drawing, but it is what it is. All right, what's my domain? Well, domain is still all real numbers, just like every other exponential function. And this graph here, we're going to say y is greater than 0 is our range because all our y values are above the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. And so now I know what the horizontal asymptote is, and I know how to graph them. 
The last thing that we're going to talk about is how we compound interest. And we talked about this a little bit on block day as well. Um, but we used only this formula. And this formula is for compounding interest um, based off of like monthly, quarterly, annually, uh, semi-annually, things like that. Um, this is the PERT equation. This is for compounding interest continuously. And this is going to give us the best continuously. Okay, um, and this is going to give us the best return if we use the same interest rate. And so here's our situation. It says if we have $2,500, you want to invest it, you have two choices. First choice is a bank that will give you 4.75% interest compounded quarterly. That's four times per year. Your second choice is a bank that gives you 4.65% interest compounded continuously. How much would you have in five years in both banks? So. For bank one, we're going to use this formula here because we know that the interest rate is 4.75. That's 0.0475. We're going to use as R. We're compounding quarterly. That's four times per year. And we're doing it for five years. That's five for T. And the amount that we're investing is $2,500. Over here, when we compound continuously, our rate is now 4.65. So that's 0.0465. N, there is no N, the T is still 5, and the P is still 2,500. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug these two things into our equations and see what it comes up with. So here we got A equals 2,500 times 1 plus 0.0475 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 5. Make sure that that exponent's in parentheses. And if I type that in in my calculator, 2,500, 1 plus 0.0475 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 5, I get $3,000. $3,165 and 76 cents. So that's not bad. Over here, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to say A equals 2,500 E to the point 0.0465 times 5. Sorry about the messiness. 2,500 E point oh four six five times 5 and I get 3,154 $31,054.38. And so you can see that our best offer is to go with the first bank offering us quarterly interest. Just because the interest rate is a little bit higher, it's going to give us a little bit better return. Um, if the interest rates were exactly the same, the continuous bank would give us more return. So so I hope that helps, and I uh, hope you learned something about the number E and compounding interest.